Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Yes. I, I feel like I, I was just on the uh, on the Green City's launch streams. I kind of have to shift gears, <laughs> but it should be fine. Uh, Stellar is for beginners. Yep. Uh, if you watched us uh, last week, welcome back. If you're not a beginner, this is not for you. We still <laughs> love having you. If you're watching this on Twitch and someone has a question in chat re relating to the early game of Stellaris, please help them out. We appreciate that quite a lot. Yep. Same with if you're watching it on YouTube uh, when we're not live. Yeah. If, if someone's asking a question, feel free to jump in with something helpful. Yes. Uh, our, <laughs> our intentions here is to be very basic and essentially create a, a playlist or a, uh, or a bunch of streams that if you've played Stellaris before and want to kind of convince your friends that it's not that scary to start playing a Paradox Grand Strategy title, this might be the playlist to send them. Definitely. What are we going to try and do today, Susie? Uh, well, my basic plan is to get as much minerals and energy as possible, um, check out my planet, and expand. Basically, yes. I need to find more people to worship my great starfish. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to talk, <laughs> talk, talk, and talk. Yes. Uh, <laughs> normally, when you see these types of streams, when there's two of us playing, we're usually already in the game. But we thought it might be interesting to show you how you actually continue a, a multiplayer game with friends that you've uh, played, like, well, let's say last week. Yes. And you want to continue. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Are we on? No, we are on Susie's screen, I think. So if we can swap to mine. Yep. Uh, hello. Uh, because I have the uh, I you. have the save. You have a save, so you could also do this. But for the sake of making everything as easy as possible. I, I'll, I'll still be the host. So, once again, <laughs> multiplayer. Uh, last time, um, we just started a new one. Today, uh, we clicked host new game, and then we both joined. Yep. This time, we don't have to do that, so I can press host save game okay. just above my head instead. I'm going to I'm gonna put in our super secret password. Indeed. Uh, it's and very then, complicated. And then I'm going to... <laughs> press host and here i get to pick out of all the saves that are available to me i get to pick the um uh the one we should play on now uh, you can pick the latest save because they're listed but you can also pick previous saves if you're okay. if something horrible happened you're like i'm, I'm gonna back up a bit and then pretend that didn't happen <laughs> but we're gonna load the latest save here so that's everything done on my end we're paused so if we swap over to susie's screen yeah. uh we can see what you need to do first of all you have to try and find me uh, yep. Uh, and this there, one? Yep, yep, there I am. And, and then, then just. Train. And then super secret password. Mm hmm. Hopefully, I spelled the super secret password correctly. And you're trying to connect? Yep. So, I think you need yes. to. Yes. So, if we go back to me, <laughs> once uh, Susie is trying to connect, this happens. I get a hot join request from the nickname that uh, Susie's account is using. I'm going to approve that and confirm. And then we can go back to Susie again, because I think it's more exciting on your end. Well, not necessarily this transferring save bit. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> but the thing that happens <laughs> afterwards. Yep, transferring save. Very exciting. Okay. Yay! My Papassian Empire. Yeah, so it was quick, but what we could see there was that, Susie, you got to essentially pick whatever empire you wanted to play. Uh, we recommend that you play the ones you, uh, uh, well, that you started with, because otherwise it might be slightly confusing. <clears throat> and now we are back in. Yeah. So uh, what I always like to do when we when you restart something is just go through and check and see if you actually remember what you were doing. Like I realize I'm at Golden here. I'm using Wormhole Stations. That's good to know. And I haven't actually, out of the three other systems that are in my uh, borders, I haven't surveyed any of them. So that's probably something. Oh, look, I've already done that because if I click on my science ship, I can see that that's what it's doing. Or at least I can assume that's what it's doing. Yeah. My construction ship uh, might actually, hmm. Since I'm using warp, uh, I probably want to build more warp, worm, uh, not warp, wormholes. I probably want to build another wormhole station. Uh, just so I can travel out further. But let's jump over to Susie instead. Okay. And see what, what you're up to. So, I think last time I built the mining stations, which you got these going on. Yeah, I mean, they're exactly. Once the once the numbers turn green, 
your uh, you have a mining station on it. Yeah. If it's white, you know that it's available, but you haven't actually built anything on it. There are also some some settings out on the galaxy map that means that you only see the stuff that you haven't built yet sure. because it can get a bit cramped later on. So I'm thinking that first of all, I want to build mining stations on all mm -hmm. of these. Um, and I think last time as well, the last thing we did was pick what my scientists were researching. Yes. That's most likely true. Good old Tina. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you ready to unpause this? I am. Okay, let's do this. Uh, one of the things, uh, let's keep going on normal speed for, for the sake of being able to talk a lot. Uh, one of the things we haven't talked about yet mm -hmm. is our actual uh, planets. Now you can have, depending on the type of government you have, if you look in the, in the top bar in about the middle, there's a planet icon. Susie has one out of five. And I, because I am a, a fanatical pacifist, I have seven. That means we can have seven planets before we have to put them into sectors, which we'll, we will get into later. But it, it might be a good time to actually look at our own planets. Yep. You have an anomaly that you ignored. Yeah, Harsh. I, I'm not going to do my anomalies until my scientists have leveled up. I well. think that's smart. And you, your scientists level up essentially by surveying and doing all kinds of other yeah. sciencey stuff, basically. So that's another reason why it's important to to survey uh, your planets. So on the matrix, we, on the first planetary summary, <laughs> get a planetary summary. Uh, this is actually, the resource output can be pretty useful. Yep. If, if you're a species that eats, um, you know, food that's not other species, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, um, the apple, well, the apple is always important because food surplus means the more you have, the easier it's going to be to, uh, to get more pops uh, because they need food to eat. But you also don't want to, usually you don't want to end up having a planet that um, has m negative food because then you have to take in food from somewhere else. And if you're in a war and you lose your food planet, you, you might have some problems. Yeah. But that depends kind of on place though. Sure. Uh, let's have a look at the surface. So on the surface, you can see that the portraits are essentially <laughs> the people we call Pops. On Susie's uh, surface, <laughs> some of them, quite a few of them, are actually enslaved, <laughs> which is indicated by the enslaved icon on my screen, uh, because I am lovely fanatical pacifists that don't <laughs> want to fight. I don't have any slaves. Uh, but if we, if we go back to Susie again, uh, the, uh, there's also a bar for most of um, some of your units is colored uh, yellow and some of the other ones are colored red yeah. below your pop if you click on one of those yeah it will actually it's basically an indicator of how much happiness that pop has happiness can affect a bunch of different things like uh mineral production well production in general and that kind of stuff but oh, since since him. yeah since that's a slave you don't really care about its happiness that much uh, it also can, it's also affected by habitability and a bunch of different stuff. In general, higher happiness is good. Try and keep happiness up, unless you have slaves and you don't care about it. Yeah. And below that, on the on the square as well, you have the uh, resource that that um, um, square is actually producing. And you can some of these uh, have natural resources that just if you have a pop on it, it's just going to produce that. Yeah. And some of them are based on uh, the buildings that are on on the pop so for example you have on on the right hand side you have a starfish that's producing five energy and that's okay yeah and that's because there's a power plant there producing yeah producing some extra uh which is why i wasn't that worried when you start to talk about oh can i actually support all of these um yeah because all of these mineral uh mining stations because you worst case scenario you could build another power plant on your planet, assuming that there's room. Uh, in general, when you're starting out, I think you should just look at okay. So what's the what is the um, what's the square producing? Yeah. Okay, so it's producing a mineral. Well, let's put a mine there then. Oh, it's producing energy. Let's put a power plant there. Oh, it's producing food. Well, let's put some food production on it. And for the ones that don't have minerals or <coughs> energy, um, can you decide what it produces just you by can planting put, you the can, building? You can put whatever you want on whatever square you want, essentially. Yeah. Uh, it's just, 
it's better if if you need minerals, put it on 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 the um, on the square that produces minerals because you're gonna get more, right? If you were to produce put a uh, power plant on an empty square that produces one mineral, you wouldn't get the one mineral. Yeah, you'd remove it and you get energy instead. There's also a bunch of squares that are taken up by what's essentially uh, tile blockers uh, is what they're yeah. called. Uh, and on, on our starting planets, we already have the tech to remove those if we want. Mm -hmm. So you can see the cost is uh, 40 energy, 40 mineral, and it takes 90 time. Yeah. Uh, we are going to end up finding planets that have tile blockers that we currently don't have the technology to remove. There is technology to remove all tile blockers that are in the game. But that might affect where you want to settle next. If if half a planet is full of tile blockers you can't remove, yeah. you don't have that much space, basically. And space is at a premium. Definitely. So also, if you have... You do have some semi-transparent pops as well. And that's a pop that's not done building or hasn't grown into a proper pop yet. It It's not going to produce anything, but once it's fully grown, it will start producing. So it's... It, you can kind of want to keep track of them because it might not be in the right spot where you want it. Yeah. Uh, normally, if I when I start out, <clears throat> and depending on what I like to focus on, I tend to look at okay. So what do I? Is there anything here I want to remove? Like currently, out of my all of my free squares, I don't have anything that produces minerals. I do have one on a tile blocker here, so I'm gonna try and clear that tile blocker. If I want to clear more tile blockers after that, I can just uh, pick another one and press clear and it'll be queued so because you, you can only clear one thing at a time you can only build one building at a time yep. um, so but you can queue up a bunch uh, one after each other I don't necessarily want this person here but that's fine whoops actually we do have more things here we do <laughs> I was just a I, was, yeah, I, was, I was slightly ahead of myself this is the army screen after surface and here we can build armies we need we need assault armies if we want to take over some planets because we need something to put on the planet we need defense armies if we're expecting people to try and attack us and land on the planet and we can also uh, this is also the screen that will show you when when there's an actual fight yeah uh, other, currently it's not doing that much last but not least we have a spaceport and this is where we build all of our ships. You can have one spaceport per planet, essentially, that you're that you've colonized. Yeah. And they can be destroyed. Uh, they're really powerful early on. So if you're coming up against a big threat that you can't handle with your uh, with your three piece uh, <laughs> strike force that I have here, that's uh, worth eleven for me and one hundred and four for you. You can always retreat back to your home planet, and if they're very aggressive and try and follow you your spaceport might be able to handle it. Yeah. It's also something, when you colonize a planet, uh, the spaceport isn't going to be built. You need to build it yourself. So this uh, window would then just have a, hey, build a spaceport. Pick this, this, or this weapon. Yeah. And currently we can also see some of the things we can't build, that those are grayed out, and why they're grayed out if you hover over them. Uh, what do we do when there are two types of resources? Asks Sarius. Well, for me personally, <clears throat> if you have two different types of resources, science is a bit different, and I'll 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 get to that because we didn't cover it. But say you have both mineral and energy. What I usually do is I skip building on that tile until I kind of have to decide: Do I need more energy? Do I need more minerals? Up till that point, I'm just gonna leave it on it as its own thing, uh, and just put a pop on it. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Put a pop on it and then ignore it. <laughs> uh, we haven't... Um, I skipped research because uh, I have... On one of my tiles here, if we go to my screen, uh, I have a basic science lab. And basic science lab... I could build a basic science lab on <coughs> on this uh, on this piece here because this is physics, this is engineering, and then this is society. And if I built a basic uh, science lab, I'd get one, I'd get two, one, one here because it already produces a physics, right? Yeah. So in other cases, if I were to build a uh, a mine or a mining network, it would remove the energy credit. Yeah. But when it comes to science, it doesn't remove it. 
Uh, at least I don't think. I'm actually not 100% sure. So Ooh. let's 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 not take anything I say as 100%. <laughs> I'm, but, I'm but sure we someone can in Twitch. We this theory. We could. Eventually. We can. I'm sure someone in Twitch chat will correct me about all the things I'm wrong about. Yeah. Um, I can't believe I'm playing the Tites and I'm almost out of tea. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to unpause again and we'll actually play the game for a bit. Where are my strike force? My strike force is here. Uh, I can I get further out? Yes, I can. Uh, if it, so, like I said, my since I am using wormhole technology, my way of tra traversing the galaxy is quite different from Susie. Susie has warp speed, so she can go wherever she wants. It just takes a while. Me, <clears throat> I have to go in. I can only go. I can only travel with a wormhole generator, uh, which means I either have to travel from a wormhole generator or to a wormhole generator. So that's why Systems all of my my of these are going back and forth, whereas Susie can just go around. Yeah. Situation log updated. Ooh, uh, do we want to talk about Unity? Yes, we Let's, should talk about Unity. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause again then. <laughs> so. Uh, we've covered most of these things up here. Uh, one of the things we haven't covered is Unity, which <clears throat> you have a monthly gain, and that depends a lot on your ethics uh, and that kind of stuff. So I'm producing 4.62 at the moment. Unity is kind of how unified your uh, uh, your empire is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, duh, it's called Unity. But it does what it does is that once you collect a certain amount of unity you get to uh, this happens and you get to pick a tradition um these are the traditions <clears throat> and some of these might be different depending on uh if you're playing with dlc or if you're playing with a machine empire some of these might be swapped out yeah. there's also a bunch of mods for for different ones but yeah. these are these are the bog standard ones. The basics. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see here, currently it says zero month. Once I've picked something, it will tell me, based on the current Unity generation, I have how many months until I get another, uh, get another Unity. Basic. I get to pick something else. The first thing you need to pick, or the first thing you do is you adopt one of these uh, traditions. Once you've adopted, you have to wait, and then you get to pick one of these inside here, depending on if you can fulfill the criteria if you fill out one of these traditions everything you get uh, an ascension perks perk uh, and um, some of these ascension perks uh, are they're really good some of them uh, it depends a lot on what you want to do uh, I'm sure we'll get into it once <coughs> once we're um, once we actually get there yeah but for now I kind of just have to figure out what what I want, and I'm I'm peaceful, uh, so it might be smart to just look at these from. I'm I'm a pacifist, so supremacy is probably a bad idea. Diplomacy might be good. Domination, uh, not the smartest. Expansion <laughs> could also be good because uh, it gives us colony development speed increased by 100%, which is fun. Uh, pop growth speed increased by 25%, also decent. Ship building costs and prosperity, good. Uh, discovery is interesting as well. <coughs> That's true. Blondie points out that don't forget to mention that population, own planets, and adopted traditions increase the amount of unity you need for the next level, which is true. So if you're a smaller yeah. empire, you can build unity a lot quicker, uh, which is one of the reasons why you might want to build tall rather than white. Uh, I'm going to pick something I usually don't pick, I think. Um... So, uh, I'm not going to have any unrest, though. Damn it. Should I just go for expansion? Is that what I'm doing? Am I going for expansion? Oh, I'm going to get owned so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for harmony. Not necessarily because it's the best one, because I'm mainly because You're I haven't done You're trying something new. I haven't done an har a harmony start, <laughs> so I have an excuse when everything goes badly. Let's unpause again. Okay. I whilst it is unpaused, I'm gonna oh. start building some stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pause again if you want to build them. Uh. Well. You know what I can do? I can just okay. lower it to normal speed. Yeah, it's it's fine because I'm just doing it. Build all mining mm -hmm. stations from my star. 
And right at the start here, there is... It's fine. Done that. There is a bit of a waiting in, in, involved. Uh, ooh, I found some society research in Landeen. Lovely. Uh, mm -hmm. Research is... It's one of those things... The more, the more I play the more I'm like, I need to get more research early. Because if you get a lot of research early, you're usually in a good position. Yeah. When I started, I'm, so I'm like, I tend... <laughs> Pe I people, people are... See, Blondie likes Harmony, uh, Sathos voice uh, for his mineral early game. Uh, whereas <laughs> Lola, Lola Lan wants Discovery. Uh, and that Dan Bailey says, Discovery is best early game tradition since it allows faster survey, better research chance, and unity generation with science ship assisting research, which means faster traditions, which is true. Um, it's fair. Yes, I will leave that research be for now. Hang on. I'm going to unblock one of my tiles. Uh, I got a scientist that has an expertise in psionics. Very cool. Which is purple, which is not something that normally happens, but that means I might be able to research psionic stuff <coughs> and get to the uh, get towards the shroud as the end game, which is fun. I haven't actually haven't done much of that. I'm gonna build myself a research station for. Why? Why did you get well, like you got so many minerals? I've I have. Three society research and three energy. <laughs> the great starfish people are blessed because of... Yeah, yeah, to be fair, you might need it. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let's not get jealous yet. It could all yeah. go very wrong for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still just waiting for things to happen here. Yay, my scientist has gained a level. Yes, uh, which is scientists gaining levels are uh, quite important because some of the anomalies that you can find depend on what level your scientist is. So at some point you're like, I have a level five scientist. I can't do this. is too dangerous. What if, what if she dies? Exactly. <laughs> I have been through many scientists. Oh, deaths. there we go. There are more things here in Par Parasac. Parsac. Parsac. You can change the name though of the systems. I could, but I, I like I like keeping them. Uh, I like keeping them what they are from the start. I I like when I colonize, then I like make them my own, change their names. I know. I mean, <laughs> I don't do that, but that's mainly because my name is in the system list, and I'm like, ooh, 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 it's my system. <laughs> so I feel like if I if I start if I if I were to start doing that, I would just. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, w it wouldn't feel great. Here's one of the things Susie taught me that I I, <laughs> I didn't know and I, f I forgot. So I have, my strike team is currently, it has this icon and that it's idle. Mm -hmm. um, an idle ship that's not docked to a space station costs more energy because it's out in the world. So, it you know, it costs energy to send it places and stuff. But if it's docked, it's going to cost less energy. And I always did... When I realized that, I always went back to, oh, to Golden, here's here's a Sam, I'm going to right-click on it, and it will, the ship will go there, and it'll just dock, which is slightly annoying, and it turns out you don't have to do that, because you can, I'm just going to stop it here. Stop, also shortcut H. You can just press this button instead, and it will return to where it, want, yeah. uh, where it came from. <laughs> I'm all about the shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a much smarter shortcut. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I was complaining earlier here about how Parsec only had uh, had three energy. It turns out I was wrong because I hadn't finished researching it. This is a pretty much a power plant. It's got everything. I have discovered alien life. Congratulations. <laughs> I feel quite good about it. I mean, as you should. Did you want to know what it says? Yes. Okay. So, the dude Sheng... <laughs> he has made a startling find on Nitrus 2. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Matrix. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Nitrus 2 are sapient, it's likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. 
So uh, I decided that everything was going quite slowly for me. So I built myself an extra science ship and an extra construction ship, or rather they are here in the queue. Now, I think having having an extra science ship to start with is smart. Yeah. Uh, extra construction ship, not necessarily the best because once you tell a, a construction ship to do something, then it costs whatever it, it costs to do it. So. I'm probably going to run low on mineral and not be able to use two, but I'm like, let's get two. <laughs> uh, I did get myself another science ship. I can't use it yet, though, because construction sh this does not apply to construction ships or really any other uh, types of ships in, in the game. But science ships need a scientist. Uh, we currently have five. They're all busy, so I can click here and recruit another one. Yeah. Um, they cost 50 influence, which is this number here, so it's important to have some influence. And I usually kind of look at, okay, so do I like any of these? This is adaptable, it's actually pretty good if you want to get um, a high level quickly. Otherwise, anomaly risk would be good in this mm -hmm. case as well, because she's going to run around uh, research, uh, well, checking out anomalies and surveying. Uh, this here, expertise in computing, research speed computing would be good if, if she was actually, um, if, if she was going to be one of the three that I use for research, but she's not. So I'm actually going to pick adaptable here. And then I just click on that and now she's here. Uh, and that means I now have two science ships. So let's survey some more systems. And as you can see, this icon here means I have a wormhole station. I don't necessarily need these two this close together, but I'm like, explain things. Yeah. Uh, if you're starting out, don't play with wormholes. Play with warp like Susie's <laughs> doing. Uh, I'm going to build myself some mining stations here. Great. Um, <clears throat> Susie, you know one more thing that we haven't actually talked about that we probably should talk about? The actual UI at the top. Yes. Because there are a bunch of things up here to the left yeah. that you should probably be aware of. Uh, and all of these, not all of them, but a lot of them are hotkeyed to the F or function buttons on your keyboard. So if you press F1, which is or this button, you'll get to see what your government is and some ruler traits, which yeah. <coughs> can be important if you're running a democracy where um, you want a, a good ruler. And kind of civics, and then you have your budget here to kind of figure out where what you're spending money on. Demographic might be important if you're running an empire that has a lot of um, a lot of different species in it. Uh, some of the some of the play styles kind of require you to have a certain amount of something for the other to be happy. Like if you're playing the um, the rogue servitors, for example, if they don't have enough bio trophies, they're not going to be yeah. produced as well. So, <clears throat> and then you have, well, you get to pick, you can change your advisor if you want. Uh, contacts. This is if you want to talk to someone else, e either do a research treaty, declare war, or, uh, you know, just insult them. They'll show up here once you've actually met them. But since we haven't met anyone yet, we don't have any contacts. The situation log is where you'll find the... Um, missions that you've accepted or if there's uh, uh, surveys you can do in certain systems they might also show up here if you're like I don't know what to do at the moment this is uh, this is a good place to look like you can see that my, since I'm running some type of democracy <laughs> I've forgotten which one uh, but I have a prime minister <coughs> and she was running on an orbital research mandate which means that if I build research stations in orbit around suitable planets for four uh, so basically, if I build four research stations, it will give me some type of re reward in in um, uh, yeah. influence. Uh, others give less and be like, hmm, why should I try and recover some artifacts? We've seen the technology before, and then we have this exciting button after it that says more, which has all of these things. Some of them are important now. Like we looked at the tradi uh, tradition screen earlier. Uh, the expansion planner we will get to, same with the ship designer. Planet and sectors, we only have one planet and no sectors yet, but this will be important later on when you have more things. Same with policies and edict, here you can set a bunch of things depending on 
what you want your uh, your government to actually do. And factions will also hopefully become important later on. Strategic resources, we haven't found any yet, but they're cool resources you can find in the world. And if you own them, they will give you a bonus. They, you, they are also pretty good for trading with other empires because there might be people that want them. Species, well, they show us our species and other stuff. Uh, but that's all that's there, and we'll probably get more into that later on. But I thought it might be good to just show them off because we're probably going to click around them quite a bit. So, how's your expansion going? What's uh, what's the plan so far? Is well, it, is it going well? I have actually well? found a habitable planet. Oh, because I haven't. Oh, actually, I have. I lied. <laughs> so, yeah. how do you tell it's habitable? Uh, it has the little green thing, and then it tells you... It tells you that it's 14 uh, tiles big, Yeah. and, and that the habitability is 80%. Yeah. So, if you click on that right now, yeah. it'll kind of show you. And this is actually quite important to do because you are going to find a bunch of different planets and the first one you find might not be the best one uh, and as we can see Susie doesn't have the tech to remove a lot of these tile blockers and also there's not that much resource wise on the ground there's actually a lot of physics yeah but not not a ton of minerals or energy really. no and and no food one f well two yeah. food there. i <coughs> i also found a, a planet here so yeah. it's looking quite uh, a bit different like i have more energy minerals and some food uh so <coughs> i have stuff on all of my uh all of my tiles which is great that is good um yes so at some point we should probably expand but not yet you don't have to expand um in especially since we're playing on normal speed things things take a normal amount of time uh, I think once you start playing this more and more, <coughs> especially when I'm playing at home with friends, we you start out kind of at normal just to set things up, or if you're in a war. But then you, I we usually play on like the second level, um, just to get things going. Yeah. You like. I can pick a tradition. Ooh, let's go look at Susie's traditions. So, what's your thinking here then? Well, I mean, the main thing I want to do is expand. So I was thinking expansion. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm kind of intrigued by domination. Well, um, being that, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> well, I'm collecting my slaves mm -hmm. <laughs> and I need to find more worshippers yeah. for my great starfish. And also, I mean, since you have slaves, you kind of have to worry a bit about unrest. Yeah. So if you can get something that lowers unrest, other than, you know, that's actually one thing you can use armies for as well. They, yeah. they lower unrest, which is usually a bit, uh, it's usually pretty good. <coughs> okay. Um, I, I, I have a, I have a horrible talk too much cough, I feel like. <laughs> um. So, what are you thinking? And also, it's fine to pause and think about it real hard. Yeah. The reason we're not is because we're trying to speed along. Exactly. Which, to be fair, considering how far we got uh, last week and this week, it's proving uh, it's proving very hard to speed along. <laughs> but I think that's if if you if you want quick and efficient gameplay, I think that's something for for the next hour when when Martin and Blondie gets in here. Yeah, exactly, for seasoned players. <laughs> seasoned players that are. <laughs> oh, and speaking of uh, speaking of traditions, I just got my second one because I output a lot more than you do, twice as much. Uh, and since I've unlocked Harmony, it now shows me which one oh. in Harmony I can pick. But I think we should still, I'm just gonna pick one that I like and okay. you, get, you get to decide what you want to adopt. Sure, I'm actually gonna adopt uh, expansion festival. That's my plan. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna get mind and body to let my uh, let my leaders get older. At the same time, I'm like, because we talked a bit about how like discovery and expansions are better. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, harmony. That'll be fun to start with. And I'm like, <laughs> why did I pick harmony? Why did I pick harmony? All the other ones are so good. Yeah. I also have an anomaly that I am actually going to research. Ooh. Because it's level one, and I have mm. a level two scientist. Yeah, and, and it's ten percent failure risk. So. Yeah, 
But knowing my luck, the, the last time I had like a 5% failure risk, my scientist died horribly. So, well, please don't die. <laughs> I am, <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna, I am close to, um, I'm just waiting for m more minerals to come in so that I can, uh, I can get some uh, research stations down. Yeah. Because I really want to get my research up. And like I predicted, I'm not generating so enough minerals to, uh, to actually use two construction ships. <laughs> So get two signs, get an extra science strip. You can wait with the construction ship for a bit. Unless you get Susie's start where you get like eight minerals in your home system or whatever. <laughs> well. And then you just put slaves on it. I feel like, I feel like the fanatic <laughs> pacif pacifist who's clearly the good guy here. It's getting shafted. All I can say to you is get some slaves and maybe life will be better. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to build another science ship. No. Yes. Okay, yeah, so the Dam Bailey here points out, one thing to mention with the difference between domination and supremacy, since it's a common question I get when playing with my newbie friends, in a nutshell, supremacy is useful during war and domination is useful after war. Ah, okay. So that's... Uh, that's so a good thing to keep in mind then. Yes. So on this one here, Nitrous, this one, uh, mm -hmm. Barren World, so this i've not seen this one before it's just is that just an anomaly or? it's an anomaly so on the on the on the galaxy map and actually on on your map as well yeah. uh you'll the different anomalies will look different depending on the level okay. so that one's blue and has a two next to it just to indicate that this is a level two uh which could be can be helpful later when you're like Pfft. Anomaly level ones. I don't want to research. I don't want to research that. I have a, level, a star, five star scientist. Uh, I'm, I just want. I just want the juicy stuff. <coughs> because of course, in theory, the larger, the le the higher level the anomalies, yeah. the greater the possible question mark rewards. Yeah, this is true. Okay, I'm gonna move over to to what's what are you actually called? What's this called? Pun traced. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. Because I, 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 of course, want to build more, uh, I want to build more wormhole stations so I can go places. Oh, okay. Is that your plan? Just uh, to go, to be able to go places? Yes. Okay. I want, I want to, I want to explore the galaxy so I can understand where I'm, uh, uh, where I shouldn't go, pretty much. I will, I will speed up to fast for a bit. Hmm. Oh. I have new research. You, you bastard. Why do you have, why don't I, what's going on with my research? No, oh, I'm, I'm not that far away, but still. <laughs> uh, I'm going to increase growth speed. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yep. Soon I'm going to get more things, hopefully. Tina is a good worker. Now I'm, I feel like I'm only generating 17 minerals per turn, which is nowhere close to Susie's 29. Uh, I did get my physics lab, so I can get some research on. And, more importantly, I managed to get administrative AI, which I like to get early, because it's just a general boost to things. Yeah. Even though the other ones I also like, because energy is great. Uh, but the thing I wanted to uh, wanted to mention is that I'm I'm not getting... I don't have... It, I don't feel like I have enough mineral production. So, and since I haven't found anything out on the map that's within my borders, because you can only build uh, mining stations, research stations in your borders, which yep. in this case is this colorful orange blob here. But I do have some mineral available to me on the planet. So I'm just gonna, I don't need the, uh, I don't need the amount of energy I have right now. So I'm just gonna drag one of my pop over here. So I'll lose two in my energy production and I'll gain uh, two in my mineral production, and I'm gonna build a. What am I gonna build? I'm gonna build a mining network. Great. I'm also gonna have a quick look and see if I can. No, I can't upgrade my planetary mission. I can, however, upgrade this building because I research physics uh, research. So mm -hmm. this indicates that this building is upgradable. A lot of buildings are upgradable in several levels. Le levels. <laughs> it's difficult to talk. Uh, and I have a physics lab, which rather than give me one, 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 which the basic science lab does, it gives me one extra Technology physics. Research. So I'm just going to pick that. And I'll be very happy with having all of those extra um, energy. 
Awesome. No energy. Research. And that also means I'm going to get the bio lab here. So I've researched all of the that kind of stuff. Great. What are you doing, Susie? Uh, I need more energy. So I'm going to um, move this little guy who's still growing and swap him with a slave. Mm -hmm. um, oh, looks like I've freed the slave. Um, and then I'm going to build... Yeah, Something. this this might be uh, slightly confusing. I think, if I recall correctly, whatever pop you put on a mineral yep. or a food square are going to be enslaved. Okay. So if you move pops away <coughs> from those types of buildings, they won't be enslaved anymore. This is really useful later on when you have factions, especially yep. if you have factions that are like, boo, boo, no slaves. Just find those faction members and make them slaves because exactly. then they can't vote. That is useful. Right, it's so great. I'm going to build a power plant here. Um, and then I can upgrade this. Do I want to upgrade? Because I've got all the different kinds. I, I like upgrading. I mean, you have a decent mineral production. Um, so, I mean, I also love uh, research. I think it's really good to get a head start if you can. Yeah. Because you also have a... You'll be able to get the higher buildings earlier. Uh, you'll be able to get some weapons for your ships, yeah. that kind of stuff. So and the early s stage of the game is essentially just get all the res get all the resources <coughs> and make sure that you can get as much out of your uh, your area as possible. True. Okay, I'm gonna go for for this uh, power plant too. Mm -hmm. Come on, give me give me give me more minerals. I'm gonna speed up so I can build this thing here there we go research station go so currently like i said i'm i'm mineral capped on my screen yeah uh i i i have nothing I have nothing nothing i have a well, bundles of energy that i don't necessarily need but still i'm about to pick a scientist for my new science oh ship. let's uh, go over to uh, your screen then yeah so we should see what we've got here uh right Research speed. Hmm, industry. Archaeologist. Hmm. Which one of these do you think would be better? I mean. Uh, so are you? This is for. Is this for a science ship? It is. Yeah. Okay. So all of the. Uh, so those two are the same, and then the yeah. bottom one is. Ancient civilization. Yeah, but they're anomaly research speed. And anomaly is something oh, that yeah. the science ships deal with, so I would pick that. Yeah. In other cases, later on, when you, you don't necessarily want that, you can always swap your, uh, your scientists that you have set to specific research and put them on ships. Yeah. You can swap them around whenever you want. At some point, people are going to die and it's going to be horrible. Uh, but you might find a better researcher when you're looking for a new leader and in those cases i'm like ooh, spark of genius yes please i will <laughs> put that on to research say society and i'll just take the society leader and move that onto a uh, research ship yeah okay so sissy do you, you want to know something horrible yes we probably have to stop okay well let me pick my research yes first, and then we should stop <laughs> So um, I'm thinking that I want to do this one so that I can unlock the um, Corvette mm -hmm. assembly yards because I feel like this is going to be useful because I want to be taking over. Yes, and more importantly, not uh, having a improved spaceport is really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, picked. Victor will be busy doing that until more, next time. Yes, and I need to. I should just look at my minerals. Though. No, I. It's beautiful. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm I'm fine now because I'm at 22. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I ma I magically got more, and I'm pretty sure it's because if we go here, yeah, we can see that moving this piece here and also leveling this up yeah. meant that ooh five extra minerals, very nice. I can also upgrade my food, which I'm, am I? Yeah, why not? I don't necessarily need it, but the more food I have. Because our monthly food uh, surplus increases the speed of pop growth by 11% on one planet. Get more food, get more pop growth, put more people on your planet, give, make them give you minerals. Ooh, speaking of getting things, 
I just got my third <laughs> tradition, so let's go. You're way ahead of me with traditions. It's, it is because I have uh, I have an ethic that gets lets me I get unity from yeah. food re uh, tiles as well, as long okay. as they have a hyd hydroponics farm on them. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that's why I'm so far ahead. Okay. That said, it's uh, it's time to save and um, say uh, thank you for for watching. Yeah. I <clears throat> we were a bit shorter this week. We we're a bit shorter. It's it's Chirpy's fault because yeah. we released Green Cities. Blame the bird. Yes, um, and of course we we love to hear your feedback. Uh, we've gotten some great comments. Yeah, we've had some excellent tweets and yeah. stuff. So keep them coming. Um, um, we had some suggestions to do the same for Hoy, and I'm like, <laughs> we might be able to do something with our new community manager. Yeah, Christian. I think Christian so, would be definitely. A yeah, um, and of course we are. We realize this is very slow. It's not as uh, fast and slick, but also hopefully we've covered we've covered the basics now. I feel like so. Maybe I feel like we have. So like next next turn, I think we can talk more about what you actually want to do rather than the systems itself. Like what what's my next step? I've colonized something. Where do I go from here? Kind yeah, of thing. I want to just start colonizing. Mm -hmm. Get more slaves. <laughs> Drink more tea. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more Stellaris, stick around. Martin and Blondie will be with you shortly. Yep. Bye.